now I'm feeling better than I ever have in the past. Like a little man running up in the streets, I said, like dad. I'm feeling ready for the change, getting the feelings to all go away. Making sure I'm on a new type of wave, positive thoughts that I convey. Writing the hits and then playing the game, chilling with fans that I know I'll attain. This got a negative, got a hate, I'm about to be achieving the fame, yeah. Look, y'all Changing in multiple ways It's f***ing my brain Will I try to maintain All the pain that's contained But I'm feeling insane All alone in my lane Never thought we would break But it's time for a change I'm maturing my ways Feeling good, doing great Never stopping, determining My life, my fate Killing the game Grinding this All of my days You know that I'm working my skill Filling the voids all until Be a knowledge for real Working the crest, spinning nil Grinding till a deal I Gotta keep working Gotta keep grinding Filling my life, putting time in Getting these deals Eating these meals Having the time of my life, yeah I'm thankful for all of the pain You caused me This can't be a line Thankful to all of the people Who never believed in my grind I'm thankful to all of the people Who helped me put in all the time My time to unwind I'm ready to shine Believe in myself Cause I know that I'm I'm finally ready for my change Having these feelings to all stay the same Now I'm on top of a new type of wave Positive thoughts I'm not conveying Making these hits Now I'm born in the game Chilling with fans That I finally attained This got a negative Love all this hate I finally achieved on my fame Protecting me and giving all your blessings. No, I always feel a smile, got me reminiscing. Hey, yeah, yeah, hey. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dragon Sports Live. I'm Dante Payne. Back in the building. I know you guys miss me because I miss you guys too, but I'm back. Only left, you know, to take care of stuff because besides radio and broadcasting, I also do photography and videography, and I had prom shoots and fashion shows coming up, graduation and stuff. So it's that season. Best season to get out, get some pictures taken, get advertising. And if you want those pictures taken, by yours truly, DragonJumpPro at gmail.com. Book me now. Prices are very reasonable. Prom special going out right now, $60 for prom shoot. That includes a backdrop, and I'll take it as many pictures as I want. So it, it doesn't give you a limit to pictures, but it does give you awesomeness by me, yours truly. <laughs> but, like I said... We got a good show for you tonight as we're going to welcome back. It is June 12th. Nice. Comfortable outside. You know, I had just a sleeve on. You see, I got my green on. had glasses blaring. And I'm feeling myself. That's the best way to say it. I'm feeling myself. 
So I have music from you. If you was tuning into live, what you heard, and I will play again. It's a new song from Tom Orlando called Transcendent. And it's actually a pretty dope song. So if you hear the words of it, you think about it. I also got Kev Durant had his, is confirmed that he did tear his Achilles, but he already had the surgery. I'll give you more about that coming up later on in the show. Um, On top of that, it is going down. And we also had hits put out on David Ortiz. Good to see he's in stable conditions, up, taking his first couple steps. So, so that's, that's very good, good to see that he's back with that. And we got Chris Blue and Hugh Blue it coming up. But Cubs sitting second right now, a half a game back. But they look like they're going to be on the verge of going back in first place after tonight's win. And I'll let you know about that coming up. Here's Tom Orlando, Transcendence, here on Dragon Land Sports Radio. Here on the Chicago Land Sports Radio.com station. Check it out. Y'all feel that beat? Can y'all hear it? I feel it. I hear it. Uh huh. Reminisce with it. Check it out. Came to terms with everything that has happened in my life When I turned my hands in time all the way back to the nights When you used to find in my life Looking back all alone in a broken home Shouldn't anybody trying to come around and help me through my darkest times Trying to be the only one, got me to the light Now we see all the problems that I face Distrust and hate feeling in my lane Trying to fix all the pain chewing in my brain But I can't stop with the things that I think All the time I'm alone every day in my home With a thought in my heart got me thinking really hard Am I really this far gone? Reverse the damage that I've caused, man At a point where I really don't know now Trying to get myself out Trying to get a that I call my life now When my tears all dried out Right now I go harder now Feel better than I ever have In the past Like a little man running up in the streets I said like dad I'm feeling ready for the change Getting the feelings to all go away Making sure I'm on a new type of wave Positive thoughts that I convey Writing the hits and then playing the game Chilling with fans that I know I'll attain This got a negative got to hate I'm about to be achieving the fame Yeah Look Y'all, changing in multiple ways It's f***ing my brain while I try to maintain All the pain that's contained But I'm feeling insane All alone in my lane Never thought we would break But it's time for a change I'm maturing my ways Feeling good, doing great Never stopping, determining My life, my fate Killing the game Grinding the all of my days You know that I'm working my skill Filling the voids all until Be a knowledge for real Working the crest, spinning nil Riding till a deal I Gotta keep working Gotta keep grinding Filling my life, putting time in Getting these deals Eating these meals Having the time of my life, yeah I'm thankful for all of the pain you caused me It's kept me aligned Thankful to all of the people Who never believed in my grind I'm thankful to all of the people Who helped me put in all the time My time to unwind I'm ready to shine Believe in myself Cause I know that I'm I'm finally ready for my change Having these feelings to all stay the same Now I'm on top of a new type of wave Positive thoughts I'm not conveying Making these hits Now I'm born in the game Chilling with fans That I finally attained This got a negative Love all this hate I finally achieved on my fame Two Drag Sports Live here on the Chicago Land Sports Radio.com station. So, let's get a little cracking with the football. Chris blew it, blew it. And what I mean by he blew it, actually, all of the kickers blew it that day. Maggie had a uh, mandatory, doing a mandatory mini camp right now where you had. All the kickers missed field goals, and it was 0 for 3. But the person who got the benefit of that was Chris Blewett. He's Blewett, team weighed him as of today, and it's just like the 
kicking competition is getting intense for the Bears. They got about two more practices until they break for summer, then they come back in late July for training camp. And we don't know what will happen. Who who will have, who will be that kicker? So a little side note is Eddie Gold has not been reporting to minicamp, and he also demanded a trade in case a lot of people forgot. So we don't know what's going on or what's cracking. It's amazing how that chain of events is happening. So, like, you want to, um, you basically want to, you can get gold back. Who was 33 of 34 with the 49ers? Or you get Elliot Fry or Eddie Partnero, who you traded from the Raiders. Now, let's keep in mind if Eddie Partnero is active during the regular season on the roster for five games, that seven round pick that the Bears traded up, Oakland would keep. If not, that pick goes back to the Bears. That only will happen if he plays five. If he's active for five games. So that's another little side note. But on top of that, where would Go go? Do you think the Bears will bring him back? He's inclined to coming back. He wants to come back. I say get that man that money and let him come back. Bite the gut. Because on top of that, when Go decides to retire, he can already train the second kicker that you already have in line because I feel like the Bears going to go in the season with two kickers on the season today this year but more importantly like I said that kicking competition is going to be fierce come late July Um, our running backs are looking pretty good we got David Montgomery looking great you know he was a replacement for Jordan Howard and he does have those hands out the backfield as well as Riley Ridley who's new wide receiver. And our projected starting lineup is going to look like a monster on defense. You got Raquan Smith and Mack, as well as Jackson, um, Prince Akamara, Fuller. So, and they and they all getting used to, you know, Chuck Pagano's, his defensive scheme, but it's actually a smooth transition since, you know, Bears defense is about smash mouth football. They like to get in your grill. They like to get on your grind. So, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Wow, that um kind of just came out of nowhere <laughs> on me. When you actually press something, then you hear what you're pressing. But, you know. It's about to go down tonight. Um, you know, Juju shifts Slicer at aka Juju. He's now the number one guy that you're throwing to. But he's not showing. He's like, I'm disappointed how things ended with AB, who's now at Oakland. More things about Oakland in a second, but AB. He just like, I have no hard feelings towards that. Whatever happened, it happened. I'm like, but now he's getting acclimated to being the number one receiver. Instead of number two, just the number one seed. So, it's going down. And speaking of Oakland, though, right? Oakland's going to be on hard knocks this year. It was 13 editions of hard knocks. Just a little history about hard knocks history. 13 editions, 01 to 02, 07 to 2010, 2012 to 2018. Those teams who was on that show had a combined record of 98 and 109 and 1. Teams missed the playoffs that was on the show. You had the Browns, the 2018 Browns. They barely missed the playoffs. You had the 2017 Buccaneers, the 2016 Rams, and the last team to make the playoffs was the 2015 Texans. And then you got two teams who won 
That was the 2010 Jets and the 2001 Ravens. So it's kind of, I feel like that's a slight, slight curse right now. If those teams who's on that show are 98, 109, and one draw, mm, 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 mm. That's all I can say is, mm, mm, mm. Because that, <laughs> and it's like, even though you got a, a new revamp roster, you got Antonio Brown on there, how, how would y'all take that? How would y'all come back? You got a healthy Derek Carr coming back. What y'all going to do? And y'all revamp. With the three draft picks that y'all drafted in the first round. So, I got to see something. Y'all got to prove me wrong. Y'all got to make that, y'all got to make that record go higher. Because, right now, it's saying like y'all doomed. Like, <laughs> going off the history of hard knocks, it looks like y'all not making the playoffs this year. Maybe. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say to that. But why we, other people was bickering about money and not getting the right of money that they wanted. Julio Jones is not worried about the contract. He's here to play football. He's going to do what he's got to do. And he's going to do it big. He's going to do it great. Right? He's going to do it real big. Real nice. So, we also had Mitchell Sports Gets a one year extension. And shockingly, coaches hurting themselves playing basketball. So, rookie coach for the Green Bay, Matt LaFur, he ruptured his Achilles tendon while playing basketball. And he's not going to let it hinder him. Basically, he going to be doing, he's not going to do it like. When Sean Payton had the broken leg up in the press box coaching, he don't he don't want to do that. He going he's in a walking boot right now currently, but he also was driving a golf cart during their mini camp with his foot up, coaching drive, while driving a decked out golf cart. That's what I'm talking about. You still gonna do your work no matter what. That's what that that's not like signs of a good coach right there. Hey, it's coming down. I got a special song coming up for you guys. When I say special, well, before I play the song, let me tell you about what's going on in coming weeks. So coming up, we there's a play that I helped my homeboy for, and his name is Christopher True Hood, and it's a play called Be Better Than Good. Now, we had, we just hosted this play about what two weeks ago now and it's coming up it'll be coming up july 19th and the 20th at a church near you the play was written and directed by christopher true hood now here's another shocker part guys he's also the man who wrote this song that i'm about to bring to you so i'll say if y'all on my Facebooks, my Instagram, my Twitter, you're going to see flyers pop up. You're going to have links to choose, get to those tickets. Get those tickets now. And then come to the play. Enjoy. You also may see your truly there too, helping out, doing what I can to help a homeboy out. That's what friends do. That's what they always do. They stick together. So, like I said, check the play out. July 19th and the 20th. And stay rock with me on Dragon Sports Live. And I'll tell you more about that later and give you more information. And I'll also give you, I'm posting that link in my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So just be on the lookout for it. And if you want to come through and show support, especially if you're in the city of Chicago. Come through, because I'm down. But like I said, 
it's all about support in this day and age. Support, networking, and let's build upon that. But with further ado, here is Mr. True Hood. Be better than good. Check it out on Dragon Sports Live. to sports chicago craves a winner at ims we crave creativity 
My name is Sam Panionovich. I'm an instructor in the Sports Emphasis Program here at the Lombard Campus, and I've been so impressed with the way our students attack their work. From TV reels to radio shows to play-by-play, our students are constantly challenged to create. It's a hands-on class focused around getting reps and experience. With a group of students that are willing to learn and improve, the product keeps getting better and better. I'm Sam Panionovich, and I am IMS. I've been in the radio and broadcasting business a long time, more than three decades, and I thought, you know, if I spread my knowledge and uh, shared what I know about the business with a lot of young minds, uh, maybe I could uh, get some of those people involved. And uh, my dad talked to schools, and I thought, I could do that too, and I could do it all in one place at Illinois Media School. Uh, I've been having a great time. I tell everybody I'm learning as much from the students as they learn from me. I am Eddie Volkman, and I am IMS. Hey, it's Chris Reese, and I am so glad to be back at IMS. I graduated back in 2007, started uh, my career at US 99.5, started working with uh, Lisa and Ray. I was the producer there for about seven, eight years, and I am so glad to be back in the building teaching uh, some new students here, getting them back doing Adobe, getting over that fear of talking on the radio. And it's Chris Reese, night guy on 101.9 The Mix, and I am IMS. In today's society and world, many people need help to cover events or to build a brand, but don't know how to go about it or say no more. Dragon Jump Productions and B-Ray Marketing is here. We not only do graphic design, but we do photography, videography, as well as taking your name and your brand and we're going beast with it. What that means is we value our clients to the fullest and we listen to everything that you would like in your brand. So what better way to do it than with B-Ray Marketing and Dragon Jump Productions? For more information go to dragonjumppro.com as well as braymarketingmedia.net and let us take your name your brand and go be let's put you on top of the map while we're doing what we love with videography photography and graphic design as well as website design so with that being said what are you waiting for click the link or go to www.dragonjumppro.com and www.braymarketingmedia.net for more information book with us and let us take your name your brand and go beast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dragon Sports Live. If you just tune in, I'm Dante Payne, your lovely host for this evening, and you're rocking with us on the Chicago Land Sports Radio Station, where it's not just sports, it's a way of life. So if you missed out, we was breaking it down to football where we talked about Juju is not having no hard feelings towards AB as well as Chris Blewett. Blewett! And now he's off the team and they're down to two kickers. So what do y'all think? Do y'all honestly think that Go would possibly come back to Chicago? I'm down and I'm all for him coming back to Chicago because he was a great kicker. He was a golden kicker for the Bears. Like, you win in games on clutch, and that's what he's good for. Parky couldn't do that on the other hand, so let's bring him back if these other two guys doesn't work out or is not what the Bears need. Let's work. Let's let's go back. Let's go back to Robbie Gold. Let's go back to the Golden Boy. And that's, why I'm, that's how I'm going to look at it. On top of that, though, so while a lot of teams are in the all-season programs, the Ravens are too. Not only that, they signed they signed Joe Horn Jr., who's Mr. Cell Phone under the goalpost son, Joe Horn Sr. But on top of that, they went they decided to go younger. They parted ways with receivers Michael Crabtree, John Brown, pass rusher Terrell Suds, and Zadarius Smith, and they also parted ways with Eric Weedle. And tackle CJ Mosley. That's a total of 17 Pro Bowls and 4,608 snaps between the teams. Um, you know, they say younger is better in some cases, but you do need that veteran presence. The veterans is what make those, like all those guys that you released were still producing great numbers, were still putting up numbers. So let's see how y'all feel. Y'all got a young quarterback with Lamar Jackson after y'all took away, you know, after y'all traded off Flacco to the Broncos, which 
he and he's still in his. I'm not gonna show him the ropes. He gonna have to learn on his own because they see he's still having hard feelings of being. You showed Lamar Jackson the ropes and he took your place. We all hate it. We hate it. Trust me, I hate it. I would hate to train the person that finna take my place. You know, it 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 make somebody feel some type of way. So I understand where he coming from. But moving on, moving right on loan, though. So yesterday the Cubs played against the Colorado Rockies. Wow, I got a little tongue twy and just felt the juices there. Yeah, he, um, basically the score was 10-3. to Today the Cubs played, that game had started at 2-10. And the Cubs demolished the Rockies today 10-1. to the Cubs currently sit, because after yesterday's loss, far as the standings, the Cubs sit right now currently second. Oh, actually currently tied for first in a sense because they won today. If Milwaukee loses their next game, Cubs jump them. So it's like an ongoing battle for first in the Central right now, in the National League Central. On top of that, we got the Chicago White Sox. Creeping, they're third in the AL Central, thirty-two and thirty-four, and they're twelve and a half games out of first, but a game and a half out of chasing the Indians. So it's going down, and you know, Indians lost today against Cincinnati, seven to two. And the Oakland A's also played today, 6-2 to two against the Tampa Bay. So, both teams are doing fairly well this time. Sox is doing a lot better than recent years. So, that's a plus. That's a, that's a double plus. And then Cubs, basically all doubts and fears that y'all had coming into the season, well, they kind of got thrown in the toilet. Because it's like the Cubs are playing it with a whole new reprieve, whole new. In their last 10, they only lost three games in their last 10 games. Pretty good, right? Pretty good. Pretty, 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 pretty good. But we did have some sad. We also had uh, Mike Klingler coming back to the Indians. Corey Segner was getting off to a hard st- start, but again, he would be out with a hamstring strain. It was a massive strain. Like, he was going to score and literally stopped at third base and started hobbling after the, like, he pulled his hamstring, like, really bad. Like, a grade two hamstring pull. And those are none nice. Especially, like, if you run it. And you just feel that pain, sharp pain. It makes you stop instantly in your tracks. Try getting one when you're riding your bike or when, like, or when you run it. Like, that is not good. It's not a good thing to feel. Um, It's really not at all. So, like, like I said, we got Andrew McCutcheon who tore his, his ACL. And that, so like injuries in baseball, whatever sport, it's not a good sight. I'll talk about more other injuries in just a second. A hit was put out on David Ortiz, one of the great Boston Sox, Boston Red Sox sluggers, while he was in his hometown and. Santa Domingo, and basically it's like, the man ain't do nothing to you guys, it was just a hit put out on, but what was just updated was that the fans, or a numerous of witnesses, caught one of the, the suspects, beat the crap out of him, put him in the hospital, and then once the police released him, Took him in police custody, but they said suspect was offered seven thousand 
an 80 in shooting. Apparently, Siri's trying to talk to me. I didn't even ask for Siri or anything. Siri's just trying to talk to me. Siri's trying to be sweet to me, but I ain't trying to be sweet right now. And it's it's sad that you you go home and it's like that happens to you. Nobody ever wants to see that happen. Like he is doing, but he's in stable condition. He's speaking now. You take a couple steps, but you never ever want to see that to happen. Like I don't want to see that to happen to anybody. It's sad. But that's the the world we live in where you have haters constantly. No matter what you do, it's always going to be a hater. So, I'm glad he's doing all right. He's back in Boston now. And like I said, he's going to make a full recovery. My condolence, my heart goes out and prayers go out to David Ortiz as he continues to get stronger and make and recover from this. Because, like I said, nobody ever wants to experience that. That traumatizes a person mentally and physically. So, big ups to him. Prayers go out to him. Hope for the best. With that being said, I got some more music for you guys. So, we already was hearing from Tom Orlando. That's his name. My bad, I couldn't even think of the name because I got so many tracks and stuff going through at the same time. And you just heard from Christopher True Hood, Be Better Than The Good. Like I said, check out his play July 19th and the 20th. It is an awesome play. But I do got another track coming up for you. Zorin. No Signal here on Dragon Sports Live. Check it out. This is Zorn. Y'all hear that nice, subtle beat? I like it.
Yes, 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 you heard it. You listen to Dragon Sports Live here on the Chicago Land Sports Radio Station. And I'm Dante Payne. If you just tuning in, gotta say big ups and congratulations to Lindsey Gullup, who's the first women's coach to cross over to the NBA and join the assistant staff of the Cavaliers. So big ups to her on that. Her confidence is much appreciated, and she deserves it, especially what she has done in that program. So big ups, big ups for that. Um, Let's give you a little background on her. She has four Final Four. I should say she has a Final Four. Seven-time NCAA tournament. Head coach for the Golden Bears. Is and like I said, she's first woman first woman head coach recruited to an NBA staff. Just made history, as Adam Silver said stated and stressed that he would love to see more women out there in the NBA coaching. She would sign a four year contract and would play a prominent role. In support of Beelin and associate and associate head coach JB Burkerstaff. So big ups to her on that. Big ups. Now, Paul George had his second procedure on his shoulder because he had a torn tendon in his shoulder, which is not good. He played through that injury during the playoffs. So did. Um, Westbrook, he was playing through an injury. It's like when when the game's on the line, when it's win to go home, when it's playoffs, it's the time to go for a championship. Players gonna play differently. Like they gonna play through that pain just so they can help their team out. Same thing what Kevin Durant did. Kevin Durant, he missed. Basically, he went down in the Houston series, and he hasn't. Missed nine games, like, yeah, nine games in his playoffs, and got hurt his calf, came back for game five, because you can actually see a difference. Like, if you watch the games like I've been, you can see, like, it's a difference when you have KD healthy and all that. Like, they knew they was coming back. They knew they had to play it. But then when he went down, what looked like a calf injury was actually an Achilles injury. Now, here's the crazy part about that. He left the game like a couple minutes into the fourth quarter. He left the game early, right? He flew back to New York to go get an MRI, which they, that was Tuesday. They said we'll find out the results of that Wednesday. The man already got the surgery. When I say he he literally already got the surgery, he Instagram to you like I'll be back. I'm a hooper. This is what I do, and I'm a recuperate. So here's the thing that's you know it's been driving me a little bit bonkers. It's like everybody's saying that it's the team's fault. It's the team doctor. The team doctor shouldn't be trusted, and like, it's not his. It's not the team doctors. It's not the general manager fault. The team doctors say he was clear to play. If y'all look at that play, it was how he when he planted to do his spin move to do what he normally do. He planted hard, so he planted right on the heel. And felt that he knew that he missed something. That's why he told them, called the doctors, called them over. It was like, hey. Come get me, I can't get up. Cause like I said, when you tell that, that's mm. Like, yeah. Mm-mm. Not a good feeling. You join cousins, Kobe. 
Dominique Wilkins. That fame list of good players who torn Achilles. And if think about it. Each player is different, right, at how they bounce back. So, all you got to do, talk to your teammate. Your teammate went through that same experience. Talk to him. On top of that, leave KD, like, leave KD alone. Because y'all saying, oh, well, he may not make the money that he wants since he just got injured. And, like I said, they putting the blame on, on the team doctors and a general manager KD is a grown man he won he made the decision on his own he felt like he needed to help his team so you have to respect the man's decision he wanted to help his team so he did what he did in that 12 minutes that he played he dropped 11 points and was leery on the terror it was like he couldn't miss for a second he did miss some shots, though, but he was just like, couldn't miss. Hand in the face, nope, basket good. So, look at it like that. It's crazy. And on top of that, you know, his free agent talk. He may pick up his option with go to state, but the, the thing about free agent talk, though, a lot of media, you know, I love my media peoples. They drive me bonkers with that. Like, oh, where is he going to go? You're not going to know where they're going to go. You can elaborate. If you got, unless you got confirmed sources, you're, gonna, you're not going to know exactly where they're going to go. It's their decision to make unless you make a trade. Like, for example, AD, he wants to be traded and still wants to be traded. So now you got teams talking to the Pelicans trying to make that offer of where they should go. And you not going to know until all season, which doesn't start until July. You can't make any trades until July 6th, if I'm not mistaken, or June 30th at the end of the season. So all you got to do is speculate, make rumors. You can see teams where you can fit. Like, they say what, what you think. KD can basically fit with... Any team, because that's how great of a player he is. He can fit with any team and turn them and make them into a playoff contenders. It's the same thing with LeBron. LeBron took a team, a Cavaliers team, and made them a champion. Took them to the playoffs. It's the same thing. He, He didn't have that much success with the Lakers, but with the draft coming up, you may get key pieces. He's trying to get another superstar. If he have another superstar, yes, they can make the playoffs. And KD, he is a superstar. So he can add to any team. I can see a, a D-Lo and KD mix, or I can see a KD and Ir- Irvin mix. It's just that's who KD is. He's a baller. He can put him with anybody he can ball. Even when, with, when it was Westbrook, Hardy, and Baca on the same team. He was still balling, even though Westbrook was more shot dominant. So it's like, it don't matter where you, where he goes, he's still going to do his thing. Right? With that being said, leave it alone. Find out in the offseason. Like, you can speculate, like, if you got legit sources that found out, like, if you're talking directly to the GM, like, yeah, we're going to do this and that. Hey, just leave it alone. Now, we the Grizzlies did add a new coach. Taylor Jenkins was named the new head coach of the Grizzlies. Now, here's the kicker part. He came from the Bucks. He's another coach from Boo Hazard's team, tree, coaching tree, to become a coach. He's the third coach, right? I'm down for that. That may be good for the Grizzlies. They did need a new coach, too. So, big ups to him on that. And then, R.J. Barrett, who also cut his hair now, he's he's smooth. He says the team, the Knicks is the only team he wants a meeting with. 
Like he wants the Knicks to draft him. He don't want to go nowhere else. He want to. He want to play for the team. Like he wants to play for the Knicks. With speculation of like where do you think these players gonna go? What? I I say, yeah. I'm. I wonder where they're gonna go, but. I'm also wondering who's going to be the biggest bus. So that's another thing. Who who going to be who going to not live up to potential? Is it sad that I'm looking for that? Yes, but hey, what could I say? I'm entitled to my own opinions, right? So I I get that. Now, if you guys wants to watch the game tomorrow, it comes on at 8 Central on ABC. It's a pivotal must-win game to force a Game 7. And in order for Golden State to win this game, you have to, one, Clay and Steph has to go off. That's one factor, right? Two, you need Cousins and Green to do their work. And you also need Iguodala to do his work. He's been good defensively, but struggling offensively. So you, once you get those players to go to work, then, you know, you're going to have that great Warriors team before you get KD to join the mix. And you'll have... You probably will force a game seven. Now for the Raptors. If they've been playing the way they've been playing and not letting Golden State go on the run, they're gonna have their first championship. So it's a matter of how you are gonna adjust for this game. It's a lot of adjustments that's been made game, especially lineup changes, roster change. Um Roster moves, so like who are you gonna put in? Are you gonna go deep into the bench for both teams? So that's what I'm saying. It's going down. I'll be watching the game Thursday and checking it out. And with that being said, I will see you guys next week for another edition of Dragon Sports Live. And I'm Dante Payne signing off the show today deuces peace out and i catch y'all next week hit my live up like i said i'll put that link to the play is a two night special i'll put it up in my facebook my twitter my instagram and yeah support me i support you guys with that being said peace out Let's do this dance one more time, shall we? It's the fourth and final of our quadruple header here today at the Keating Sports Center. It's the final home match for the Scarlet Hawks here in 2017 as they are set to take on the Silver Lake College Lakers. Welcome back in again, everyone. It's alongside Justin Wilson. I'm Ryan Fay with you here on the broadcast, starting a little bit earlier, just a couple more minutes earlier as we're going to be having the senior festivities for Rhea Green in just a couple of minutes. But before we get to that, though, Justin, the Lakers, uh, we saw how they looked in that first match. I know the devastating injury to Shimon Flanick did not really help the team psyche out. And in the end, they lost in three straight to St. Mary. And with the Illinois Tech team that is now one and one in this two-day span now, they're going to be coming as like you know sharks looking coming from one definitely and i i really feel like illinois tech the scarlet hawks are going to try to bring it today especially for it be, with it being senior day for raya green so uh that's going to play a big part in how this game draws out and hopefully i mean i i would like to see the lakers try to get some kind of a rally especially in support of their teammate that uh unfortunately went down earlier in that previous set well, let's uh, let's. If you don't know who Ray Green is, away from the volleyball court, we'll give you some stats.